Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on two mathematics and our topic for today is statistics and our subtopic is the frequency polygon. So we are going to look at how we are able to represent our data using a frequency polygon and how do we plot for this point on a Cartesian plane. So frequency polygon is obtained by plotting the frequency against midpoints. This is contrary to what we were doing when we were discussing on um, histograms. Histograms, you are using the class intervals, either upper limits and lower limits. So in this case, you're just going to get the midpoints. And we said you get the midpoints by adding the upper limits plus lower limit divided by 2. So that needs to be done always before you do your, your polygon. So this is an example of a polygon. You need to note that your polygon needs to be uh, drawn up to the x-axis. You can't leave your polygon hanging. So we are going to, I'm going to show you how to ensure that your polygon is not hanging when you are done with plotting your points. So let's look at this as an example. So we have two, we are going to draw two polygons in the same axis so we have the max and we have the class intervals so i said the first thing that we are going to do is draw the midpoints so midpoint and these midpoints are both for mathematics and physics so the the max the max are going to be equal in the midpoints like the midpoints are going to be one column but when we draw on our frequencies you notice we have values for mathematics and values for physics that tells you that you're going to have two polygons or two lines in the same graph so the midpoints we are going to get them by adding our class intervals or upper limits and lower limits so 10 plus 19 which is going to give us 29 divided by 2 will give us 14.5. And then we have 20 plus 29, which is going to give us 49, which is divided by 2, gives us 24.5. And then we have 39 plus 30, which gives us 69, you divide by 2, which is 34.5. You can see there is a, a, a um, there's something that is happening between these values, and you can also guess the next one. So next is 49 plus 40, which is going to give us 89. If you divide that by 2, you get 44.5. And then we have 59 plus 50, which is giving us 109. If you divide that by 2, you get 54.5. And then we have 60 plus 69, which will give us 129, which will give us 64.5. And finally, we have 70 plus 79, which will give us 149. If you divide by 2, you get 74.5. So we've gotten our midpoints, and these midpoints are the ones that are going to be on the x-axis. And then the frequency is going to be on the y-axis. So how are we able to determine how we place, what you place on the x-axis and what you place on the other end of the other x-axis? So you notice the difference between each and every midpoint. For example, if you pick, if you pick the first one, which is 24.5 minus 14.5, you notice the difference is 10. That tells you if you take 14.5, you subtract 10, you will get an initial value, which is going to be 4.5. So this 4.5, you're going to plot it on the x, 0, 4 point, a frequency of 0, and then 4.5. And then the other end, we have 74. So we are going to add 10 to give us 84.5. So let's choose our now values of x-axis and y-axis scale. So since we have been able to get the value that we are going to put at the x-axis, both sides, the beginning and the end, so let's show what we are going to do. 
So we will start with z with a zigzag because it's not going to start from zero. We we'll start with 4.5, 14.5. So it means one centimeter represents 10, and then um 24.5, and then 34.5, and then we have 44.5. We have uh, 54.5. 64.5, 74.5, and finally 84.5. Remember, this is the x axis. On the y axis, both for physics and mathematics, we can see mathematics the highest value is 13, for physics the highest is 10. So we can go with even numbers. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 and then we have 12, 14 then 16, then 18. So that is what you're going to have. So let's represent those data on this table. You start with mathematics. So mathematics is a frequency of two. The midpoint is 14.5. So 14.5, two. So this is where the point is. And then frequency of six at 24.5. Frequency of six, next point is here. Then at uh, 34.5, frequency of 7, so it's going to be 6. And then in between here, half of between 6 and 8 is 7. And then frequency of 13 at 44.5. 13 is going to be in between 12 and 14, which is going to be here. And then frequency of 6 at 54. So frequency of 6 at 54.5, frequency of 4 at 64.5, so here, and finally frequency of 2 at 74.5. So after that, you join using a straight line or using a ruler. Mine may not be that straight. Make sure yours is straight. Use a, um, a ruler so that it can be easier. So you will have approximately something like that. But remember we said that our polygon should not be hanging. So it means the next point is going to be 0, 4 point. 4.50 and 84.50. So it's going to be here. So you see our polygon is touching on the x-axis fully, so it's not hanging. So next we look at uh, physics. So at 14.4, we had 3, so it's going to be here. At 24.5, we had 9, so it's going to be in between here. And then uh, 34.4 at 10, so it's here. And then 44.5 at 6, so here. So 54.5 at 9, so in between here. And then 64.5 at 2, so here. And finally 74.5 at 1, so it's going to be here. So let's join the points. Remember, we said you use uh, a ruler. Mine may not be perfect because I'm just using a hand. Make sure you ask has a ruler. Remember, once again, it comes back to 4.5, so we join to the x axis to the beginning. So the first uh, polygon is for mathematics, and the second one is for physics. That's basically how we do it. Just don't forget to join your point using a straight line, using a ruler, so it can be neat and well made. But you see how our polygon is not hanging, ensure it's not hanging. Always check how your midpoints are, and then 
make uh, an assumption of the previous number uh, like we did with 14.5 we subtracted so as you can see the number that was before preceding and then 74.5 if we were to add 10 our next number would be 84.5 and remember the uh, value of, fre of frequency in these values that we have added is going to be zero because you don't have so that's why it falls perfectly on the x-axis and that's how our frequency polygon looks like. So check out more derivation questions on the same. Practice, use a graph paper and a ruler and practice how to represent your data in a frequency polygon. So see you in the next lesson.